All right, let's talk about sound and cooking and how mixing the two is similar and how we consume and send those out to the public when we go to a restaurant or we eat at home and the difference between live and processed food and mixes. So to do that, we're going to get some fresh food out here. So we're going to need some various instruments and we'll use a tomato for a kick drum. Probably sounds like one. Because it's a little spicy, we'll use the serrano pepper for a snare. Onion for toms. Ride cymbal, kind of goes on everything. Kind of and we will put the hi-hat on top as some cilantro. So there's our drum kit. Oh wait, we need some overheads. Salt and pepper. All right, so now we got our drum kit, but we're not gonna be happy. We need to finish off the rhythm section. So let's go ahead and grab our bass guitar. For bass, we'll use tortillas and or chips. Pretty much the same thing. Um, cooked a little different. So this is our rhythm section. We can form a, a really good setup here. We're of course gonna need the rest of the band. And for that, we will use meat for the guitar because it kind of gives some real um, meat to the mix. Now, chicken would probably be your everyday go-to adventure there. Um, pork, maybe you have a lead guitarist that would probably fall into the pork realm. And then beef would be um, kind of a good rock and roll guitar to deal with. Now this beef here is actually ranchera uh, marinado, which is uh, flap steak marinated in orange juice and some other spices. So this I guess would be guitar with a lot of effects. Um, petals and added to it. Cool. Um, and once we mix it all together, we're going to need some, uh, maybe we'll add some effects to it and we'll use Cholula for that. All right, so let's get started and um, get our band and mix together. Now these are the raw ingredients. So this would be just like a kick drum sitting there and this would be a guitar sitting there. Um, we got to put strings on it. We got to uh, tune it and get it ready. So that would be the preparation and finishing of it. Um, you know, just a guitar. And once we've got that all put together, then we'd actually have, however it's prepared, it would be our guitar riff. That would be building our song. So let's get started with the rhythm section here. First thing I'm going to do is we'll work on the tomato. Let me get some sharp things. Uh huh. So, getting this uh, kick drum ready. Maybe we're changing the head, retuning it. And having a sharp knife is really good. Maybe it's like having a good mic. I don't know. It's a good looking kick drum, isn't it? Bright and colorful. There we go. We're getting ready for um, the show. We've got the tech all tuned up. Good. That didn't work out so well. How about our snare drum? So, that ready. And um, got our little snares falling out over here, some everywhere. It's probably enough snare room for us. Better. Um, toms. Get the toms ready for the gig. Yeah, the aim is infallible here. Oh, I know what it is. It's the damn camera in my hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the excuse. All right, toms. 
Why do we use onions for tongs? Because hey, look, they're round. All right, right floor, floor. And we'll go ahead and slice these guys up. Ride symbol. Now, when we're cooking or mixing, we have um, all these individual ingredients. Um, we have our band on stage. That's definitely what it is, the camera on my hand. And we combine them all together and present them as a dish to the audience. Cool, is that our whole drum set? I think it is. Salt and pepper, let's grab a bowl. And we're gonna mix this together. Oh, let's grab two bowls, because we're gonna do this in stereo. So now that we've got all our instruments, um, we need to put a little kick drum in the left, and we'll put some kick drum in the right. And we're going to need to, we've got our snare drum mixed in with our kick. We've got some kick and snare there. There we go. Kick and snare left and right. And let's add some toms. Hi-hat. Hi-hat in the left and right. <clears throat> Pan those out. I had a ride cymbal here somewhere. Is this my ride cymbal? I think it is. Throw some ride cymbal on there. Need ride cymbal on both channels. There we got our stereo drum sound. Let's go ahead and want to have any lacking of overheads. Bass player comes along. Give it a try. Now we got ourselves a rhythm section. We have these guys here for them. You can heat these guys up and we'd be doing pretty good. Somewhat of an incomplete meal. Go ahead and get our guitar player going. And as with any guitar player, Kind of messy. Let's have a word with the lead singer. And get some vocals into this mix. And you know what? We'll peel it. I don't want to be too um, edgy around the lead singer. They might. Um, might upset them and that causes all kinds of problems. Now we could just have vocals and guitar and just have a meat and cheese. That's kind of like a Philadelphia cheesesteak. It's kind of like sound check here. We're getting ready for the show. We're getting everything tuned up. What do we got here? Ah, oh, our keyboard player. Our keyboards like avocados. Um, they can be really good, but they can go bad really fast. You really don't want a keyboard player that dances around too much. It's hard to play keyboards and look cool at the same time. It's a specific art. Oh, look at that. This keyboard player is on fire right now. how our guitar player is doing over here. You gotta do a lot of warming up and not, not unlike a guitar player with a lot of smoke coming out or making some noise over here.
We'll be doing a stereo mix today. All right, we'll start off with our drum kit here. And um, our drum kit, we'll go ahead and mix that with the bass. See if we can get ourselves a um, decent mix. Actually, I want to make that's our left and our right. So I'm kind of getting my pans together here, panning these out properly. And we'll put this on the other side. There's our right. Cool. Here's our left mix, a little cilantro right, a little um, high hat light. Okay, so now we got a pretty good mix on either side. We're in stereo. They're not exactly the same. Um, Bass and drums are dialed in. We'll throw on a little guitar. Look at that. Okay, we'll get them vocals. Throw a vocal, um, the vocals dialed in here. Beautiful. And would you like um, keyboard with that? It's gonna cost you extra. Sure, we'll have some keyboard with that. That'll be $10 more. And now, we have a live mix. We've got our left and right forming a nice stereo mix. Now, when things are mixed together, the beauty of the live mix is you can take them back apart. We got a little too much vocal in here, so let's take the let's turn the vocals down a little bit. Maybe a little less keyboard. So we can kind of fix that. Now we're happy with this mix. This is good. So we got a good live show. But what if this is going to go for a CD? If it's going to go to a record, or we're going to like pipe this over and stream it? Well, now we don't really have all these separate things. We've got to take this because we've still got all our stuff around here. We're able to take it back apart because we have access to it. We have access to the original tracks. This is our multi-track world. We, can, we have more or less guitar. We can add more or less drums, more or less bass. We can do whatever we want and in real time, rebuild these things to be what we want. I'm gonna taste, I'm gonna go ahead and give this a listen. Right sounds good. If left sounds good. Left and right. Awesome. Let's go ahead and um, send this to the people in their homes. So, we can drop this baby right in here. And we'll do left first. We'll just mix one side at a time. I'm not going to do them both at once. Cool. We're going to try and minimize our losses here. And let's go ahead and do the right side. <coughs> Wonderful. So now, let's get our right side here. This will be our stereo mix. So that's our, our, our stereo mix. Now we can give that a taste. It's good. It's all the exact same flavors. Everything that was there before is still here now. We had a little loss, but the loss is not that big of a deal. For all practical purposes, it's all the same. Yet it's not quite the same in that now that I have this, if I want to remove the vocals, I gotta muck around with this stuff. I gotta go out there and pull out the vocals and I'll get most of them out. And that's like what happens if you have like a vocal, uh, you know, a stereo mix, some software that removes the vocals. It's going through and trying to pick out the little bits. It'll leave a little in and it'll get a little bit that wasn't supposed to come out, but you can get there. If you want more guitar, you can kind of shove some of these uh, meat pieces over here you can maybe add a little guitar or if you want you know you can kind of muck around with it but you're not going to 
have the control because you're only down to two and it's all been mixed together in a way that it can't come back apart in an efficient way. Um, that's kind of what is happening when stuff gets mixed together and then sent to us. Now that doesn't mean it's not delicious. It doesn't mean when you go to a restaurant and you get your food and it's been all mixed together in a way that it can't be pulled back apart. It could, it's a wonderful thing when we love that. It just does not have the same control. Does it taste the same? Is it have the freshness and, and texture of this. Maybe if it's just made, but if you went to a restaurant and they just made the food, that's live. They just made it and you're at the live show. If it comes in a package at a store or in a CD or on the live, in a stream over the internet, well, that's not as fresh. It's been mucked with. It's been packaged in a way that has lost some of its ability to be altered. You can't order it with less or more salt or cooked more or less or whatever it is. Let's go ahead and look at this from the perspective of a speaker. We've got our right side and our left side. And we've got woofers, tweeters, and mid-range. How does that work? Well, the woofer wants the big pieces. So it's going to look for all, there's a crossover. It's going to take all the big pieces and put them over here and send them to the woofer. If I had a filter. And then it's going to take all the little pieces and send them to the tweeter. And it's going to take all the medium sized pieces and send them to the mid range. And that's kind of how you end up with your speaker all the instruments go everywhere. It's just the size of the piece that goes to the tweeter. So if a kick drum makes a click, it goes to the tweeter. If the guitar player makes high frequency, it goes to the tweeters. If a hi-hat makes a low frequency, it goes to the woofers. And so filters and crossovers look at things by size, but not by type. Well, that's, this is a messy mix here. So here's our drum set. And rather than put everything together and then divide it up by size, woofer, mid-range, tweeter. What if we took the drums and we sent those directly to the listener and the other drum set and sent that to the listener? And then we said, okay, cool, let's send some guitar. We'll send some more guitar. And we will send some keyboards. More keyboards and guitar right now. We got a craft work. Um, and we got a singer, send some vocals. So now we have all these instruments showing up separately. If we had separate speakers for all of these, and these all came down different pipelines. Now, when they get processed and mixed, I might throw the drum set into the mixer and then end up with smaller chunks, but this is still the drum set. I could throw the guitar player into the mixer and process it, but it's still the guitar player. The same thing with any of the instruments. Now we have a completely separate. When I talk about stereo, woofer, mid-range tweeter, which has a mixture of stuff that's then been divided by size will never sound real. What I'm saying is that will never be the same as this, where you have all of your separate pieces reproduced separately in different points in space. Now I can take these and combine them how I wish at the house, or there could be an algorithm or something in the software that combines these and they could go to stereo or they could be kept separate and reproduced separately. I could bring a plate out. It could be a, uh, a smorgasbord or a, a layout of all the different instruments. And then the 
taco or whatever you're making, the, the pica de gallo is being made in your living room in real time from all of these things coming from different spaces versus piping them all down. Surround sound and speakers have everything on the wall. They all, they're all surrounding you. You don't have them here. We have it all on a table in the middle. Here's the band. Here's, we have access to everything. When it comes pre-packaged and already mixed, that's what you get. All right, dinner time. <laughs>